Welcome to Wellness Radio with Dr. Jeanette Gallagher as your host. Her show discusses topics of health, wellness, and spirituality and is about discovering your place in this great universe from your cells to the cosmos. Along with her guest in casual conversation, she strives to ask the difficult questions that may be holding you back from a vibrant life and shares new ideas that may inspire you to make a change in your life that you only can see in your dreams. And now, here is Dr. Jeanette Gallagher. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Wellness Radio. This is Dr. Jeanette Gallagher, and it's a pleasure to have you with us here this evening. Tonight, we are going to be talking about our experiences, our awakening, our spiritual journey, how are we evolving, and where are we coming to in this expanded consciousness? What's going on in the world today? We look at this, it's the year 22, and we say, the world is changing. I don't know what it's all about. How are things on warp speed? And I feel like I'm just standing on the corner and things are speeding by me. Others are saying, I'm feeling like I'm stuck in this hole. I just can't seem to get myself out of it. I'm not really sure what's going on for me. And yet others are saying, I'm caught in the abyss. I don't have the unknown around me all the time. And I'm not tethered to the past. I'm not tethered to the old. But I really quite haven't gotten a grasp on the future on what's showing up for me as my new evolution is expanding. Today my guest is Ned Burwell. His book is Be Love, a book about awakening. Ned's going to be sharing his experience over the past several years. And I think what's really important, as Ned and I will be talking today, is our stories. What is our story of our experience? How can some of the words and the things and the energy that we kind of emit, how can we find that it will spark something in you, it will inspire you, it will uh, trigger you. Many people will be triggered. So others will say, mm, I didn't even listen to the words, I just kind of felt something and I know it was what I needed today. That's what we'll be doing today. Ned, thank you so much for joining us. It's such a pleasure to have you with us today. Thank you for having me, Dr. Jeanette. It's such a pleasure to to join your show and to share a message with your listeners. It's a great time to be able to talk about this, don't you think, Ned, in these years? Uh, we couldn't have had this conversation even 10 years ago because people were still um, maybe putting, as I would say, the sentences together. You know, it's funny, Ned, on this show, when I first started 11 years ago, and I said it's going to be a new language, right now the alphabet is being created. And then after a few years, I said, oh, we're starting to form words. And then a few years after that, it was we were creating sentences. And now I look at it in this year, as we're talking here today, it's really about how do we take these sentences and form paragraphs about our experiences, don't you think? I think so. And and the world has changed, and it's still changing. For, For the most part, I think we're still in the transition of we we don't really know what's going to be down the road. And I think that's a wonderful thing to the mind. It can be somewhat haunting because if we don't know what's ahead of us, we sometimes will go into fear or we'll become afraid. Our uncertainties will cause, will shake things up in us. But right. I think because it is a time of uncertainty, we're we're being challenged to create, to look into ourselves, to reevaluate. That's the abyss time. It's because you've left your language and your dogma and all of your um, old beliefs and truths behind. You can't carry any baggage, but you haven't quite formulated the future. Don't you think what you just described was the abyss? Absolutely. Absolutely, 100%. And you know what? I wrote Be Love a book about awakening as a response to suicide that was happening in my community in 2018. And when I look at the book now, I think this is more relevant now than it was even when I wrote the book. I think it it holds and carries a message that is pertinent for our times. Yes, I think that um, 
you and I, as being forerunners, being star seeds, being these emissaries of light, as I call it, um, we have been standing in place, we have been holding guard, we have been uh, present and open and radiating. And when that happens, I think that sometimes we feel like we're an island. I could, I know over the decades I've said so many times, and I'm sure you have, I feel like I'm standing here and stuff is spinning around me. I'm not quite sure, but, um, uh, you know, and you go, uh, uh, you know, you feel like your world is full of, uh, I don't know, you know, almost as if you're always with your mouth wide open, but you have nothing coming out. Don't you think in essence that's now where, more of the masses of collective are now at that gate, so to speak? I think so, and, and I I think there's a stirring in people. And, you know, lately, any of the online speaking I've been doing, I've been talking more about consciousness. I've been talking about raising our consciousness, and I I think it's it's so important that we we reach deeply into that because I, I feel like as we raise our consciousness, we become aware of deeper and bigger truths that lay within us and a bigger truth of what reality is in, in general. Mm-hmm. You know, I think the idea, I just had a guest on recently and we were talking about our cosmic consciousness And yet I think humanity is still stuck in this is the human existence. You know, for myself, man, I'm over 65 now, and I never quite could get this human stuff. (laughs) You know, I used to go to readers and stuff like that, and they would say, my gosh, Jeanette, do you ever engage with humans? You're only always speaking with spirit. And I said, yeah, because I live in the ethers, you know. And I've always been that way. It's, It's just been a part of me and uh someone had said recently actually they kind of say it all the time to me Jeanette you got to get back to reality you know this is the world we're living in you got to get down here you know how can you Mm -hmm. you have to be able to exist and I said don't bring me into your existence I'm not in your world I'm in my own and I'm quite fine thank you so don't you think there is now in this time and space on the calendar that we are in that some people have taken that leap and they are living from the ether, so to speak, but there are others who have not. And really what we're here today is to share our stories and our journeys so that they can start breaching and opening up their doors. Well, I I think the old paradigm is that we're body, mind, and spirit. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I I would like to flip that around a little bit. I, I think we're spirit. In essence, we're we're really spirit, and we happen to have a body and a mind. Mm-hmm. And as we identify with the body and the mind more deeply, and the spirit less deeply, we sort of mix up the reality of who we are, who and what we are. Right. So today, in today's age, I see it as a, as an important idea to to embrace that we're spirit and we happen to be in body we happen to have a mind the body and the mind are tools and that's exactly what i talk about in my be love i i share with the readers some of the tools that i've i've learned how to transcend the mind transcend the body but but not in a way that you're negating it or rejecting or neglecting Mm-hmm. but rather using it as a tool that it is putting it in its in, a, in its rightful place mm-hmm. but if i if i digress a little bit my life wasn't always that way in right. my early 20s i reached a breaking point my i was living in, in in my mind solely in my mind and i was living in my my emotions so I was trapped. I felt very trapped. I was trapped in my mind, and I was trapped in my body, and I couldn't get out of it. And don't, the darkness. But Go don't ahead. you think, Ned, that if you look back, if you can give it a date, let's say is that 1980s, 1990s, or the 2000s, if we look back at that in history and time, we all were there because that's where the collective was, you mm-hmm. know? 
In other words, we could not be who we are today back then. It, it doesn't correlate. In other words, you can't have opposing energies existing within the same context. So That's right. In essence, you know, everybody was there. I mean, every single spiritual person can turn around. If they are true and honest with themselves, they all were there. Everybody was there. We all did it. You know, we all thought about the I, the me, what am I going to get? How am I going to get it? How many letters am I going to get behind my name? You know, um, what kind of car do I need? And am I good? Am I bad? Am I right? Am I wrong? Everybody was there. That was the collective energy that was on this earth at that time. So I think that what you're sharing is we have all been there, and I think what it's important to take from your story about being there then and being in that darkness is that it validates that, yes, great, fantastic, I'm glad you had a really crappy 80s and 90s, you know, (laughs) in retrospect, you know. We did it when we were going through it, but we definitely do in retrospect. But that was so essential. So don't you think it was essential to be in darkness? I, well, absolutely. In, in the new book that I'm currently working on publishing, the the first chapter is called The Beautiful Darkness. And, you know, I, I talk about different layers of, of what is the darkness and is it good for us? Is the darkness as bad as what we think it is? And because we associate darkness with evil, but... But when I when I turn inward, when I go into the silence, I'm moving into the darkness, the unmanifest, the the unknown, the unseen. You know, so I I sort of began exploring what is darkness. Mhm. And I, I think there there's a certainly on the on the spiritual path there seems to be a, a breaking point and the darkness is a necessary experience for us to to move into. How do you Wouldn't relate you to darkness? Yeah, what, you, do you, what do you share about the darkness? What is your belief of it? Well, I I see the darkness as the, the silent space in us. It's not void of light. Rather, it's where the light gathers. So when when I as an artist I've been, I've been an artist for thirty years and as I'm in the mode of creation I'm sitting in darkness I don't know what's going to happen next and by watching creation move through me hundreds of thousands of times I began to realize that it was like light that moves up into me. And the, the, so the darkness is not void of light, rather it's where the light gathers inside of us. And, and that's, a, that's an important point for today because we're in a place, the world's in a bit of a place of darkness, and it's, it's our job to turn inward and find the light of creation that wants to move through us. Mm-hmm. You know, I think the idea, too, is that um, are we devoid of the connection? Um, People say, let's get out in nature and connect with the nature. But people still have it that it's separate from us. Oh, it doesn't have a consciousness. It doesn't have a brain. It's separate. Um, People have said that the earth, you know, um, there's a lot of spiritual people who are talking about Gaia, Mother Earth, and we need to nurture and create it. But they still have it in their brain that it's a rock, you know, um, mm-hmm. and they can't seem to connect to that. And still we think about things that are going around in the cosmic world, about comets or asteroids or other planets or solar flares, and they're like, oh, yeah, that's out there. That's cool. That's on the Internet. Yeah, that's interesting. But they can't even get the idea that all of this is the energy of which we are expanding towards. We're expanding towards becoming all with one. You know, mm-hmm. and when they think about that in their terms, they're still in a different dimension that they're connecting with, don't you think? Well, and I think it takes uh, an awakening into a different layer level of consciousness before 
we can start to understand our connection to the earth and our connection to the divine, the cosmos. In in ordinary st- states of consciousness or just the the average person out in the general public, may, maybe they're not, they haven't awakened uh, that consciousness within them. So how would they know? And mm-hmm. And again, I think that's the importance of raising consciousness and having having a little bit of darkness that can create a little bit of an internal pressure to 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 want to move out of your current situation to look for more to you know start thinking about why am i here what is my purpose all these sort of things mhm when you talk about it in your book, Be Love, a book about awakening, you talk about wanting to change. But a change, sometimes the word in essence means many people will uh, equate it to, I was wrong before and now I need to be better. Do you know what I mean? But in mm-hmm. essence, truly what you're talking about in your book is transformation or evolution. Transformation and evolution, it's all a process and it's all within and it's all good and it's all where we're going versus I think people wanting to equate the word with, oh, am I doing something wrong? Do you mean I have to be someplace else? Don't you think Mm -hmm. that separation there is a little bit disjointed these days and now we've really come to the point where it's more of being in the flow of the energy and being able to read it and walk with it? If you look at change from the perspective of our mind, mm-hmm. it's it's not like the mind will invariably the mind doesn't like change, or our ego doesn't like change. It, we the mind likes to predict what's going to happen, and it likes to prophesize, you know, every second of the day. And that's the nature of the mind. It's it's constant. It it can project our us into future moments and make a lot of assumptions. So to the mind, change is dreadful because we don't know what's going to happen. But as we learn how to trust, we can we trust in something bigger in ourselves and in trust in, in life itself. We start to look at change in, in a different way. We start to see that what what is staying the same? What has ever stayed the same? Can I can't think of anything that stays the same. Even an object is a physical object is changing. We we don't see those changes, but it's changing. Everything's changing. So essentially, change is part of life. It's mm-hmm. when when something comes into physical form or uh, an object or even. A, a situation, a friendship, you know, everything changes the moment it touches down into this world. So creation, as it comes in, it it doesn't stop evolving when a creation touches the ground, whether that creation is the creation of a relationship, the creation of a, a physical thing. That creation keeps moving until it moves back into the unmanifest. So it, it comes from the unmanifest, from source, energy, whatever you want to call it. And as it comes into this, this plane of existence, it continues to change. It continues to change until it returns itself back into energy. That's just and, that's my theory. And, and Nat, in your book, you talk about thoughts and emotions. We all know about the thoughts and emotions where you can get stuck. People say you get stuck in the negative side, and it just it feels like you have to get out of it. And in your book, you even have it on the bottom part of the page, the negative ones and the positive ones on the top part of the page. So in essence. We say, are the negative ones that other dimension in time and the positive ones are this more expansive human that we wish to be. Yet, there's always going to be, at times, anger, fear, grief. It's just how we can be able to concisely not get stuck in the spot, don't you think? 
Well, yeah, there's there's nothing wrong with anger. There's nothing wrong with grief. If if a, a loved one passes, we should be feeling grief. Mm-hmm. We, you know, if if somebody is harming your pet. You know, you you might get angry, and that's probably warranted for the situation. I think right. part of part of the the construct of the mind is to it, it wants to be satiated and comfortable and and live within the with all of its desires being fulfilled in every moment. So we we tend to cleave to emotions or that we want to experience that. You know, and, and a good portion of my life was geared around what was going to make me happy. But happiness itself is just just a feeling in the body. It pales in comparison to being at peace. So it, are negative emotions are bad? No. They're they're necessary and, and applicable at times. Are positive emotions bad? No, they're necessary and applicable. But I think, as as a whole, that when when people really, when you really look at what it is that we're seeking to experience through our emotions, we're we're really, I think, we're really seeking to experience peace. But we just maybe haven't thought of it in that sense, you know. Because if if you ask somebody, what would make you happy and and then when get a new car then what well as soon as you got a new car you wouldn't maybe in that moment you wouldn't want for anything and you would just surrender to the to the moment you, you would naturally be at peace if you're desireless anchored in the moment you know peace naturally arises on on in those two conditions not that it will stay but Mm-hmm. We cannot have an experience of it. And I think that what, too, we are talking about is what is showing up for us at this time. I think open awareness is really important because a lot of times people will say, I don't really know what you're saying, but we say just sit, be meditate, be in silence, be in peace, um, just stop all of the chatter. And sometimes when you're able to do that, then your awareness will start to open up and you will start to see things, as we say, with different eyes. Don't you think many times we've had those experiences over our lifetime? Yeah, I, I, I've had many experiences where the silence in me begins to speak. And so in when I sit down to write, I, I generally will start out writing what I don't know. <laughs> and that that mm-hmm. may sound confusing. I start out with writing what I don't know, so I I employ what's called bottom to top processing. Typically, we we process information by starting out with what we know, and then we move into what we don't know by g- compiling all that information. I, I go the other way. I start out with what I don't know. I'll ask myself a question that I may not know. And I listen for that silence. What does the silence tell me? What comes? What is bubbling up naturally? Mm-hmm. And what comes out is like sometimes garbage, <laughs> and mm-hmm. other times what com- it comes out is just amazing. And now the tough job is to to try to bring some logic or ground some ground the information that comes through so that it's comprehensible or it's, you know, but I, I've written many things where I didn't write it, the silence wrote it, and now I had to try to validate it or be brave enough to just say it. Mm-hmm. So the silence is always speaking. It's It's just that we, it speaks, sometimes it speaks several decibels lower than the voices in our heads. Right. And it, it's a matter of where we're putting our attention. I constantly, in the past, all of my focus and every moment of the day was directed at my mind. And so whatever was happening in the mind was the condition and quality of my day. That it was, I was subject to those voices and thoughts running through my mind. 
And, and in my book, I distinguish between thoughts and thinking. They're, they're two separate things. A thought right. mm-hmm. we can't control. You, can you tell me what your next thought's going to be? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You, you could say, well, I'm going to think about applesauce for three hours and ten minutes and do it. But mm-hmm. we can't we can't determine what our next what thought is going to drop into our minds. So that that's that's very telling. It says, I I can't control what thoughts come in, but I can control what I think about, and that's where our attention, in the the piece where we where are we putting our attention? We if we're just putting our attention on the mind we may begin to just talk back to the thoughts that are dropping into us. And, but if we take our attention and we shift it inward, I always say to the heart, because it gives people this, this reference. We, we focus the attention there and don't speak, just be quiet and listen or just, or we can go the other way. Ask it, ask the silence in ourselves a question what arises what about the idea of as we say emotions and feelings when we believe them to be true and we believe them to be the driver of our car so to speak or our human vehicle because I think sometimes people will say but this is the me is it truly the me it, it is when you're identified with it mm-hmm. it's, it's about as re- real as a reflection in the mirror if you're standing in front of the mirror you're in it. As soon as you walk away, it disappears. And so the the emotions are are similar to that, and and thoughts the same thing. They're as real as what we make them. And but the reality is that if we place our identity, that's what this is where the problem lies: is placing our identity through them. So if an emotion arises in me and it's angry and that, that was my go-to in the past i was i was always angry at something and but as soon as the emotion of anger came up i would say i'm angry right and and i would identify with it and i'd wear that that emotion like it was like a suit you know and, and i may i may not take it off all day mm-hmm. so i've heard people say I woke up in a bad mood so today's not a good day <laughs> well that that was like the f- first three seconds of your day right you know we will drag that around all day sometimes and but the reality is that we we choose what emotions we hang on to we choose what thoughts we want to think about and and I can say from my own experience there's not a lot of peace in choosing for thoughts and emotions. Where the where peace comes into play is that when we know how to set them down but and and use those thoughts and emotions to our advantage. So uh, an emotion is is a a valuable tool. If I'm speaking to you and I notice a, a change in, in your voice or there's a change in the feeling that's that's happening between us. Maybe it's time for me to be quiet. <laughs> the emotions tell us all kinds of information. They tell us when to reach out and embrace somebody. They tell us when to step back and, and stay away from a person. So they're mm-hmm. they're a wonderful tool. Our emotions are not our intuition, but they they help guide our intuition. They help. They help give us clues. It's just more information. Let's take a break for a moment, and we will be right back. Today we discuss many life-changing concepts. Who do you turn to, and how do you know what is best when faced with a health crisis? Dr. Jeanette is a patient advocate. She listens to the patient, the doctors, and the family, clarifies the health issues and concerns, then helps the patient make the best choices going forward. If you would like help implementing change into your life and health, we can talk and see where you are stuck and how to improve the quality of your life. Check the link on the bottom of today's show page or visit 
drjeanettegallagher.com to schedule a phone appointment today. Ned, let's talk about, you share in your book about goals, and then we talk about purpose. You know, a lot of times well, you ask someone, what are your goals? And I think that's almost an antiquated word in a way, because mm-hmm. what you're expecting them to list is, um, I'm going to have a degree, I'm going to have kids, I'm going to have this, I'm going to live here. Do you know what I'm saying? In other words, that's your vehicle position on the earth, so to speak. When in essence, your purpose is something different. It's to maybe be, to be the light. When, when it really comes down to it, we're all going to be emissaries of light. That's really our purpose. But really what we're talking about is where are others along that path to get to that point? So some are still stuck with, you know, when they have the gratitude and they list off, I'm, I'm grateful for, um, this today or that today, like my car started today, or um, everybody was nice at work or whatever, and it's sort of like, really? You know, that's not a gratitude list. I mean, you know, I had Hurricane <laughs> Katrina here. I mean, I had Hurricane Ida here. And the day after the storm, we were all sleeping outside in the sidewalks because it was like an inferno here. We had no services or nothing. I was grateful that the next day I woke up, I was kind of like, ooh, dang, I'm still here. And I was grateful for her one thing the breath of life, because that was all we had. There was nothing else. So I think the idea is how can we find our positional space for our human vehicle today? Where are we? And how can we see to move forward versus retros going back? Well, I I think it's important to have our our goals in in check. And and what what is a goal... What are we What are we trying to achieve? Is Is a goal based in desire? Something that the mind wants, or is it Is a goal based in purpose? And and those are those are two two types of goals. You know, I I've had many goals of getting big screens or having a nice car, nice house, and and at the end of the acquisition of those goals. There wasn't an ounce of happiness to be found, really. It, right. it was temporary at best. So I, I think it's important to to maybe evaluate in ourselves, what are my goals? And and where do these goals come from? Are they, are they heart-centered? Or are they mind-centered? Do they have desire? Or are they based in love? And, and now we're, we're not talking about the same thing. These are these are two different types of goals that we have. A heart centered goal is is kind of where I'm at. I I have goals that that appeal to purpose or what I feel my purpose is, which is ever unfolding. It's not one thing. In in my book, Beloved, though, I, I spoke about goals, and I said a goal is is just the the starting point, and I, I think that. That's an important point that I made in that book. We we tend to think a goal is the end. And and to me, I think a goal is the beginning because my imagination is is more creative than my mind. So mm-hmm. our mind and our imagination are two different realities. Imagination is creation, creative. The mind is limited. It only knows what we've put into it or what our what drives our biology. So my imagination, if my mind says this is my goal, then my imagination can probably outwit my mind. Creation is is far more clever than me. Yeah, and I've learned this as being an artist. You know, if if I think I'm clever, well I just sit and create and watch that movement of creation move through me and realize that my silly little ideas pale in comparison to the the level of creativity that flows through me, that, that the divine moves through me, because I'm not responsible for creation. There's only one creator, and it's the divine. But when I say I, I'm saying the small I, the ego, the right. this humanistic self, whereas the big I is 
you know, what we were talking about earlier about unity and because there there is only one eye and it's we're all it including the divine. So Ned, in closing, let's talk about the story of be love. The word love. Um so many times people will say Oh, yeah, I love this person, I love this, I love that food, I love this area, but, ooh, I don't love that. Oh, keep that away. Ooh, that's not good for me. So I think the word love has so many definitions, perceptions, and energy around it that almost, in essence, um, even just the, the, the using the word will just bring something up in someone's minds and they are already going to have a preformed concept of what you're talking about, don't you think? Yeah, absolutely. And and the the type of love that I that I like to write about is more about the the divine qualities of love. And you know, I see love as a much bigger thing than my love for shreddies. <laughs> or my my love for my pet like there there's there's a divine aspect to love and it's it's bottomless in nature it's it's like the silence inside of us there's no bottom and you know the the further we move into love or the further we move into the silence the more profound it gets when we look at love in a with a dualistic mindset we look at it in the sense of it has an opposite or we we're not really accessing the depths of love love is beyond the qualities that it holds like and and i say that love is beyond its qualities because when they say love is patient well patience has an opposite love is love is divine Mm-hmm. Love is beyond any dualistic opposite that you can compare. So the qualities of love are only just just a, a starting point into what love is. It, I see love, if, if God was a piece of cloth, love is the weave that holds it all together. It's, and it it's, has everything to do with our humanness, and it has nothing to do with our humanness. It has everything to do with their humanness because it it holds all of this together. It's it's the weave, and it has nothing to do with their humanness because it's divine. But yet we can we can use love in this life, in all of our humanness. We can use love. It, it's such a powerful tool that we have, and love shows up through many things. It shows up through the qualities. It shows up through the quality of compassion gentleness, kindness, patience. So it shines through those qualities, but love itself is way beyond any quality or idea that our mind can hold of it. Right, because I think what you're really talking about is conditional or unconditional. And even when you step into the conditional kind of love, when you step into conditional kind of love, you're really having all these labels on it, you know, about what it is to you. As soon as you think of the word love and you bring up something in your thoughts, right there you're in the conditional love. When you think about unconditional, to me, I don't even notice the word. I don't even notice anything about it. It's just the energy force. It's just that silence and just the sense of essence kind of you know force that we're feeling, the essence of energy. It has no labels. It has nothing to it. And many times people will say, but I'm living through it's unconditional love. And then they turn around and they're screaming at their spouse. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> or, oh, I'm going to be really, I'm going to do, I'm going to be on my spiritual path today. But then they still jump back into their human stuff. So I think in yeah, essence. Yeah, you messed up my latte. How yeah, dare right. you? <laughs> I know. But in essence, I think um well, what we are really attesting to today in this year that we are in is saying that 
yes, I'm, I can see the other side, and it's now bringing into form, and I understand it and everything. However, knowing that my physical body that I can put my hands on today or my stove that's burning over, I can put my hands on it today, that's still the old other side of the bank, and we are still in there too. So in essence, kind of, we are still in all of these paradigms of change and evolution. We just have not untethered ourselves to go to the next dimension, the next frequency, where we will be free of whatever this is that's got us bouncing around like hoosh balls. Don't you think we feel like that these days? Well, I don't, I don't think our freedom and peace is it lives in another dimension. I think it's here right now. And, and maybe you're saying that, but... But I, I, I think we are we are in this physical form, and it's wonderful. And when we no longer need it, we'll cast it off. But this, right. this, I think sometimes what propels us into deeper and deeper le- layers or levels of consciousness is by accessing this moment now, but also keeping a pulse on the the silence within which contains all of eternity it contains the, all of the cosmos and you know so this is sort of my practice on a daily basis i don't i don't want to reject what's here and now uh, mm-hmm. this physicality it's wonderful i'm so my 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 practice is to be deeply present that's putting one finger on the physical and what's around me holding awareness to what's around me and then have one finger resting on the silence in me Mm -hmm. and in that in that practice we're sort of weaving in between the worlds of other dimensions in this dimension so it's, it's not we we need all that consciousness but we we also need to be present here because we're here Right. If we didn't need to be here, we wouldn't be. There's well, no... Ned, I think the idea that uh, there's so much change, uh, our brains, <laughs> our brains. Sometimes we want to knock on them and say, "I don't know what you're coming up with these days," but <laughs> it's it, you know. And we sit back and we say, "The mind, the thought, the brain, the spirit, the um, soul essence, the energy." All of these are new words that many times people will say, I don't have a grasp on. And your book, I think, beloved, will help you get a grasp of where you are today. It's not to tell you so that you could tote along and, um, you know, follow our path. What it's really about is being able to say, you can read the words, feel the energy, and find your own path utilizing maybe a letter or two or a word or two and that's really what our goal is today yes absolutely and and how would how would you or i know what's right for anyone Mm -hmm. we would have to be living their life and and so be love was the intention of it was to, to love and support it was also the intention was to help people awaken awaken into their their truth awaken to something a little bigger than this physical reality awaken into the depth of their 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 heart and their soul and we don't know what's right for other people but i my only goal and and job i feel is just to to share tools and if people awaken that's that's their business not mine yeah well, Ned, it was such a pleasure to have you with us today. Can you share with the listeners how to find out more information about your work? That would be wonderful. Well, since the pandemic, I put Be Love on my You Matter site for free. I just feel it's a pertinent message. So if you go to www.youmatter.ca, you'll find a free copy of the book Be Love, a book about awakening. It's on there as an audio book. And it's on there as a, a typed, written form. So feel free to check out uh, that. And there's also a plethora of information and wisdom that's riddled all through the You Matter website. 
Well, very good. It was such a pleasure to have you with us today. I thank you so much for joining us and for sharing your story. Thank you so much. It was it was an honor to speak with you today. If you'd like to find out more information about Ned Burwell, again, his book is Be Love, A Book About Awakening. Please do click on the link on the bottom of today's show page to go directly to his website for more information. And also, as he has shared, the book is now available for free on the website today as the show is being published. And do check it out because uh, many times people will say, I'm kind of stuck, I don't know. You know, the answer is that we are all we are all seekers, and it's all about being able to go and say, oh, that intrigues me. It's something inspiring. Oh, it's something that's maybe uh, I don't really know anything about. And it, you become inquisitive. That's really what your soul journey is all about, is becoming that inquisitive being so that you can get out there and share and explore and evolve and talk to people. That's what this world is all about. Thank you so much for joining us today. This is Dr. Jeanette Gallagher, and until tomorrow, have a great day. Today we discuss many life-changing concepts. Who do you turn to, and how do you know what is best when faced with a health crisis? Dr. Jeanette is a patient advocate. She listens to the patient, the doctors, and the family, clarifies the health issues and concerns, then helps the patient make the best choices going forward. If you would like help implementing change, into your life and health, we can talk and see where you are stuck and how to improve the quality of your life. Check the link on the bottom of today's show page or visit drjeanettegallagher.com to schedule a phone appointment today.